Okay, everyone, welcome, welcome to this webinar on some new enterprise widgets that uh, have been released and are in the process of being developed, uh, as well as an Experience 2012 preview. This is going to be a rather short webinar. Um, it's just a matter of going over a couple of things, but uh, we thought it would be good to announce some stuff to you folks and to uh, give you an opportunity to see the agenda that we have planned for the March 26th and, or I should say March 27th and 28th uh, event that we have taking place in Amsterdam. So what I'm going to do is change the layout of the room. So you should notice that the chat pod has changed or moved and that we now have a Q&A pod down at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions that uh, come to mind during the course of the presentation, feel free to enter them in the Q&A pod. And if I'm at a point where I can answer, then I will do so. If not, then there will be um, more time at the end of the presentation where I can uh, go ahead and answer any questions. So hopefully everyone can hear me all right. Go ahead and bring up the agenda for today's session. Well, basically, we're going to talk about one of the uh, widgets that was recently released, a Twitter widget, which is in the community site forums, and then some other widgets that are actually uh, in the process of coming up a parallax scroller widget, uh, an image pop-up widget, and a vertical text view widget, all of which should be released within the next eight weeks or so. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the different speakers and sessions that are going to take place during the experience. So why don't I go ahead and give you a little demonstration of some of the widgets. Let me go ahead and share my screen over here. And hopefully you can see my screen. I'm just going to go ahead and preview. Yes, it looks like you can see my screen, so that's good. And I will go ahead and bring up InDesign. Now, of course, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with widgets, uh, widgets are bundles of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that uh, provide additional custom functionality to enterprises' digital publishing tools when they are associated with a text frame on a particular page. Um, what I'll also do here, just because I, I hate seeing the pixelated view um, I'll go ahead and just put that on high quality display. <laughs> so um, at any rate, uh, a widget is basically just a package that gets uploaded into Enterprise and then makes itself available via a widget panel. When you click on a text frame and click on Enable Widget. Over here on this particular screen, what I've got is a Twitter widget. This is available in the community forums. Uh, right now you can see that I can enter or I can select a username, a query, or a team list. Uh, if I click on username, then I can go ahead and enter in various usernames here and then click on add and they will be added to the list of usernames that will show up or the whose tweets will show up in this particular frame. If I want to remove a particular user then I can just click on that user and then click on remove. If I select query then I can enter in a term here and this term will be searched on in uh, the Twitterverse and any tweets that uh, match that particular term or hash code will then appear inside of the, um, the tweet box. I'll just leave that on username. Um, I can choose an avatar size for how big the picture is that gets displayed along with the tweet. I can also specify the number of tweets that uh, I have appearing inside of this particular frame. 
um, whether or not it will refresh itself automatically in seconds, whether or not to include the time, what text to display if it's loading the tweets, and a CSS file to associate with this particular frame in order to stylize what those uh, tweets look like. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of it, um, you can store pretty much any type of file that you can imagine inside of Enterprise. However, you do have to make sure that Enterprise is configured to handle that file because it has to know what to do with it once it gets dragged in or brought into the system. You can see here that I've got a Twitter CSS file. What happens is I changed my administration features to be able to support files with a suffix of CSS. That allowed me to go ahead and drag the file into Enterprise. And then what I had to do is go ahead and uh, configure Content Station to tell it what to do with this particular CSS file. And in my case, I wanted it so that if I double click on a CSS file, it will open up inside of my text editor here, my Twitter or my TextMate text editor, which is a little bit better suited for editing CSS files. Once I'm done editing that, I can go ahead and check it in and it will have a new version set with it. Um, it'll save those changes back into Enterprise and then I can go ahead and select it from my widget panel. Now, in order to show you what this looks like, because of course widgets don't actually show their content um, inside of InDesign, they only show their content inside of the uh, preview generated either by DPS or uh, the iPhone simulator um, that is generated when you use our older digital magazine tools. What I'm going to do for this particular tweet or this particular widget is show you what it looks like inside of the preview functionality of DPS because it's a little bit more handy than using my camera that I've got set up over here where I will show you some of the other uh, items. So you can see uh, because I'm narcissistic it went ahead and uh, I, f I put in my own particular name and these are the last few tweets that uh, I've done as a matter of fact if we count them one two three four five Six. These are the last six tweets that I've made. This is the avatar size. I chose not to uh, put in the time, uh, but it uh, went ahead and it is showing me all of this stuff over here. Um, I can also click on a particular term and have it open up inside of a text frame and it will go ahead and uh, show me those uh, results uh, inside of an in-app browser inside of DPS, so that's really nice. Uh, that is not available inside of our older digital magazine tools. So I'll go ahead and close that up. And uh, that's pretty much the Twitter widget. Um, you can find this, of course, on the community forum where we have a number of other widgets also available. I just switch over really quick to the community forum. You can find it inside of the forum for mobile devices, tablet publishing creation tools. You'll see here is that Twitter widget that's available. So moving on to the next widget that I want to be able to, to show you is something called Simple Image Pop-Up. Inside of DPS we have the capability of going to full screen by tapping on a particular uh, widget. And so this widget is very simple. It allows you to select an image from your dossier uh, and assign it to a particular frame. Once it's assigned to that frame when it's displayed on the tablet device, then you can tap on that image and it will take up the full screen. Why don't I go ahead and show you over here. Make sure that this is coming up properly. And I've got an old eyesight that is on my particular desk here.
And what I'll do is I'll go to my Adobe Viewer. And you can see here is that Twitter widget, but it doesn't show up very well um, inside of uh, this particular camera. But you'll see here that I've got that layout that was exported to my device. If I go ahead and tap on an image, then it goes ahead and pops up full screen. So it's a very nice way to be able to um, just have images take up the full screen uh, very quickly or whatever layout element, um, you know, image element that you want. Um, it's, a, um, it's a lot easier than making a hotspot, for example. So that's the benefit of using the image pop-up. The next widget to talk about is the parallax scroller widget. So Stuart asks whether or not there's a UI indicator for open and close. Um, not by default, uh, Stuart. There's nothing um, that shows up. You would end up wanting to have um, an element on your layout that says tap on the item below in order to see full screen. And then it's pretty intuitive to tap on it again to make it close. The parallax scroller, for those of you who aren't uh, who aren't aware of what a parallax is. Basically, it means that an image is moving at a different speed, like the foreground image is moving at a different speed than the background image. So it gives a little bit of a 3D effect. And there are a lot of options for this particular widget. You can choose the scroll width, height, um, the foreground, midground, and background images. You can choose uh, how fast uh, the layers are actually moving. And what's also really cool is that um, you can go ahead and tap into the accelerometer of the device. And instead of using your finger in order to scroll the parallax, uh, then you can actually just tilt the device in order to have it work. You can choose the inclination speed, whether it moves left and right, up and down, or in all directions. And you can even choose to disable touch interactions so that it's only the accelerometer that's actually providing the, um, that's providing the movement. So if I switch over back to that camera, I can go ahead and go to this image here and you'll see that with my finger foreground image is moving at a different speed than the background image. It's especially noticeable here where you can see that um, that line in the background. Um, but what's really cool is the fact that all I have to do is tilt the device and it will go ahead and scroll the foreground image at a different speed than the background image. So it's kind of a nifty a little widget and it gives you some options, some cool design options, especially for covers uh, or for full pages or the like. Now the other widget that we've got is a text view widget. If I go here to the portrait device or the portrait indicator uh, layout, <laughs> you'll see here that I've got the vertical text view. Now, the vertical text view that we had in the older digital magazine tools was an option that um, was applied to an entire document if there was no vertical, um, if there was no vertical page, for example. Well, the widget actually uh, gives you some more configuration options in terms of specifying what a header image should be. Um, you enter the body text here, style sheet, and you can specify what the tray images are down here at the bottom. And if I go back to that camera and then just change my orientation here, you'll see that I get the vertical text view and I can increase and decrease the point size of the text. I 
And here are those tray images that scroll down at the bottom. I can go ahead and tap on one and they function like a slideshow. And it will scroll uh, when it's not 100%. I can go ahead and even make it smaller than 100% if I want. And I've got an indicator in the corner to tell me what the percentage is. Is there an automated way, Fabio asks, to have text view as in the last version of CDS? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by having it uh, in an automated way, uh, Fabio. If you mean in terms of not having it as a widget when working with DPS, then no, uh, there is no automatic way other than if you were to script things. Um, but uh, right now it's just enabled as a widget for uh, our DPS configurations. Let me go ahead and close that up. And those are some of the widgets that we have coming out. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was the items that are coming up in the experience, which hopefully I'll see some of you there, because of course I will be there. So um, what happens is we're having an event in Amsterdam on March 27th and 28th, and some of our keynote speakers include Mitch Clay from Time Incorporated, uh, Mitch was part of the team and headed up the team, as a matter of fact, that brought all of Time's publications uh, to, uh, to the digital device, such as the iPad and Android and the like. Uh, their entire portfolio of magazines is now available, and so he'll be talking a little bit about their experiences there. Uh, we also have Ravi Gopalakrishnan, uh, and he is from Barnes & Noble head of their Nook division, and he is going to go ahead and talk about the Nook successes and what, um, what they've uh, sort of see as coming along in the future of operating systems devices, as well as some standardization efforts that have been going on uh, in the tablet industry itself. And then we have uh, Zeke Koch from Adobe Systems. Uh, he will actually be uh, talking about DPS and what the future of DPS holds. Uh, he's actually the senior product manager for uh, DPS, so he's got some great insights that he's going to share with people. And then we also have Roger Rizdahl from Adobe Systems, and he is going to be talking about monetization options using Adobe DPS, so how you can go ahead and make money in the variety of different uh, ways that DPS uh, offers. We're also going to have presentations from the Sunday Times. They were one of the first newspapers on the iPad, and they have um, been changing that app as time comes as time goes along. And so he, uh, Simon Reagan Edwards, that is, is going to be talking about better, faster, stronger, building a second generation app. We also have Rebecca McFeeters from McFeeters and Company talking about tips for building better apps. And of course, I mentioned that monetization uh, session that we're going to have. We also are going to be debuting officially Enterprise 8, and so you'll get a chance to see that and to hear more about the roadmap. Uh, Enterprise 8, of course, is coming out this year, and you'll learn about some of the new features that we have in store for it. We also have sessions on migrating to Adobe DPS, uh, how to speed up production using Content Station, and uh, a widget basic session that I'll actually be heading up in order to show people how to create uh, widgets from scratch, um, as well as a session on enterprise in the cloud. We're also going to have workshops on smart connection scripting, enterprise server plugin development, uh, making widgets for digital publications, and a session on HTML custom store uh, items for the digital content viewer.
So if you have not uh, made your reservations to go yet, uh, just also be aware we are making a major announcement about a software project codenamed Typhon. It deals with Adobe DPS and it's going to be uh, pretty cool uh, technology. So um, hopefully uh, some of you folks will be able to make it to uh, Amsterdam on March 27th and 28th. If you're interested in signing up, then we recommend that you go to woodwing.com and use the banner there in order to register. And Melita asks, are the presentations available on the community site if you aren't going to be able to get to Amsterdam? Um, some of the presentations will be made available on the community site, Melita. We won't be able to make all of them available uh, just because of the nature of uh, you know, some of the speakers and things like that. But they'll be, but a number of them will make it onto the community site, at least in a uh, PDF form or, uh, or such. So now is an opportunity for you to ask any questions. As I mentioned, it was a, uh, going to be a rather short webinar today, um, just to kind of give you an opportunity to see some of the widgets that were in development and to offer your feedback and uh, to basically uh, ask anything that you want. So I'm just waiting to see whether or not anyone has any questions. Ah, Andrew asks, I have tried some of the widgets that worked previously under digital magazines that don't work under DPS. Is the, stu is the structure different between the two platforms? Um, as a matter of fact, Andrew, uh, the content viewer is slightly different uh, for displaying web content than, uh, than the Apple's standard or our older digital magazine ways. Of, um, of debuting content. For the most part, most widgets should work okay, but you do have to take into account certain things such as loading times and caching uh, items. Um, but, you know, in terms of is there an API document, uh, no. There's, uh, there's nothing that would actually, uh, that actually details uh, some of the differences there. But for the most part, widgets should work the same, but if they don't, then it just requires um, a little bit of tweaking of code. I've had to make changes to some of the widgets on the community forum to make sure that they work properly under uh, the DPS content viewer, um, but they were pretty much minor changes um, that had to be made, uh, mainly because I'm not an official programmer. Um, those widgets that, uh, that were developed using some standardized coding practices should work okay, but um, you know there's just the occasional in the occasional instance where they don't. Very cool. Um, I'm glad. Well, Andrew is coming. Yay! That'll be great. <laughs> uh, Fabio asks, "Are widgets working fine on Android devices?" Uh, Fabio, yes, uh, especially when working on the content viewer. Um, then uh, widgets work uh, much more uh, much more consistently than perhaps they did inside of our older digital magazine tools. But yes, they'll work on Android devices. <laughs> Andrew Stewart would like to come with you to uh, to Amsterdam, so leave a little room in your suitcase for him. <laughs> Andrew's going to need a pretty big uh, suitcase. Melita would like to go to, but um, if there are, are there any other questions? Fabio asks, is there an alternative for PDF stacks on Android already, or are they being planned? Um, is for the time being, uh, Fabio, I don't have. Um, I don't have any more information on that, you know, dealing with PDF stacks, um, but it's very possible that uh, something is going to come up about uh, dealing with that. Um, I would have to, um, I would have to get back to you on that. I'll go ahead and uh, ask some questions and get back to you offline on that.
Okay. Well, if you guys have any other questions, then feel free to email me, and I will follow up with you. Um, this webinar will be posted on our website uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. If you just go to woodwing.com uh, forward slash webinars, then you'll find them. Uh, they'll, the uh, option is also available from, I think, the first or second menu uh, on the Woodwing website. You can always find uh, the presentations there. Uh, you know, about 24 hours after they've, uh, they've appeared. Whoop. And I just gave Stuart audio privileges, so <laughs> I needed to turn that off real quick before we heard anything. Uh, and so, at any case, thanks everyone. I appreciate your time, and, uh, <laughs> and so... What I'll do is hopefully see some of you in Amsterdam, and uh, if not, then I will see you at the next webinar. Thank you very much.